I recently had a comment asking me why Aragorn dismissed the Oathbreakers at Pelagir, and why did he not instead take them to Minas Tirith or even beyond to Mordor itself. I thought this was a good question, so I decided to make a video about it. Why didn't Aragorn take the Oathbreakers to Mordor? The Oathbreakers played an important yet limited role in the War of the Ring. Upon being summoned by Aragorn at the Stone of Erech, they follow him through southern Gondor, and drive the Corsairs and the Haradrim from the crossing at Lynn here, before pursuing them to Pelagir. At Pelagir, Aragorn wins a decisive victory. The Corsairs and the Haradrim are so afraid of the Oathbreakers that they flee in terror, with many of the Corsairs diving into the Anduin and abandoning their ships. This allows Aragorn to seize the fleet and crew the ships of Gondorian soldiers, with the intention of sailing north up the Anduin to relieve the besieged Minas Tirith. But before he sets sail, Aragorn holds the oaths of the Oathbreakers fulfilled. Released from their curse of undeath, the Oathbreakers vanish. Following the victory at Pelagir, Aragorn does indeed sail north, and his fleet reaches Minas Tirith only a few hours after the arrival of the Rohirrim. His forces play a pivotal role in the battle, which seemed to be going ill at that point, and the Morgul host, alongside their Manish allies, are completely crushed, and the few survivors retreat across to Anduin. Although they were not present at the Battle of Pelennor Fields, the actions of the Oathbreakers at Pelagir was a major contribution towards the eventual victory. But let's get to the question. Considering the effectiveness of the Oathbreakers at Pelagir, it seems like a no-brainer to bring them to the Pelennor Fields as well. Much like what happened at Pelagir, they could have been unleashed upon the Morgul host, terrifying them and causing them to rout from the field. This might have lessened the amount of losses sustained by the Free Peoples in the latter half of the battle. Afterwards, why not then unleash them upon Mordor itself for similar results? Alright, I'm going to split this video into two sections. First I'm going to talk about why this might not have even been possible, and secondly, I'm going to talk about why it might not have even been a good idea, and why it might not be as effective as it sounds. So firstly, could Aragorn have even kept the Oathbreakers after Pelagir? We don't actually know. He had the power to release them from their oath, but the power that cursed them came from Iluvatar himself, which makes it uncertain whether Aragorn truly had the final say in their fate. If Aragorn did have ultimate control, would it have even been just to deny them peace after Pelagir? It's important to look at the exact words that are used by Aragorn when he addresses the Oathbreakers after summoning them at Erek. The hour is come at last. Now I go to Pelagir upon Anduin, and ye shall come after me. And when all this land is clean of the servants of Sauron, I will hold the oath fulfilled, and ye shall have peace and depart forever. For I am Alessa, Isildur's heir of Gondor. Now, Aragorn promises them that when all this land is clean of the servants of Sauron, he will release them. At first glance, you might think he's talking about Gondor as a whole, but this line comes after Aragorn specifically refers to Pelagir, and given Aragorn does eventually release the Oathbreakers at Pelagir, that seems to be the context for the line regarding this land. So Aragorn has promised the Oathbreakers that he will release them once Pelagir is cleared of Sauron's servants. So what happens if he doesn't follow through with this promise? We don't know for certain, but probably nothing good. We know how much power oaths have in Arda. There's a relevant line from the Silmarillion. For so sworn, good or evil, an oath may not be broken, and it shall pursue the Oathkeeper and Oathbreaker to the world's end. Aragorn has made a promise. And while a promise and an oath aren't necessarily the same thing, one could argue there is little difference in this circumstance. Although I doubt breaking this promise would open Aragorn up to divine punishment on the same scale that the Oathbreakers received, it's still possible that there would be consequences for denying the Oathbreakers their rest. These consequences may include something bad happening to Aragorn himself, or to Gondor as a whole. As to what could happen, your guess is as good as mine. It could even lead to a comical scenario where the Oathbreakers attempt to curse Aragorn. Alternatively, Iluvatar himself might intervene and bypass Aragorn's authority by releasing the Oathbreakers himself. There's also more mundane consequences. By refusing to release the Oathbreakers, Aragorn would be taking a major step towards becoming a tyrant, which would only open him to further corruption in the future. Such a tyrannical, despicable act would definitely not endear him to the people of Gondor, which is especially important because Aragorn has not yet become king. Realistically, it benefits Aragorn to associate himself with the Oathbreakers as little as possible, and wielding them like a personal weapon will not go down well. 
There's also the matter of the Oathbreakers themselves. Denying their request might cause them to rebel, which means at best, they return home, and at worst, they might even switch sides. So denying the Oathbreakers their rest isn't a decision to be taken lightly. It's not a matter of Aragorn simply going, actually, you guys are kind of useful, I might keep you around. It's a decision that might have both short and long-term consequences. Consequences that might not seem clear at that time. At the end of the day, if you're dealing with an army of vengeful ghosts that exist thanks to a 3,000 year long curse, it's probably best not to play around too much with them. Alright, on to the second part of the question. Let's assume Aragorn is able to keep the Oathbreakers after Pelagir, because I said earlier, we're not sure if it would have been truly possible or not. So assuming he does, is it even worth it? Because just how effective are the Oathbreakers? In the Peter Jackson films, the Army of the Dead was basically a free win card. They were a giant ghost army that could slaughter their way across the battlefield whilst being completely immune to damage. This is not the same as the Oathbreakers in the books. In fact, Legolas even says that he was unsure whether the Oathbreakers' weapons could harm, and going by the rules of Tolkien's universe, the Oathbreakers shouldn't be capable of physically harming anyone. They are ghosts, they do not seem to have bodies. This is not the same as the Nazgul, who are referred to as wraiths, traditionally interchangeable with ghosts, but the Nazgul do have bodies, they're just invisible. Lacking the capability of causing physical harm, the Oathbreakers are limited to one use, spreading terror. Let's not downplay the usefulness of this, but at the same time, we must also recognize an important reality. You can only spread terror as long as people are afraid of you. Ghosts are scary, but they become significantly less scary once people realize that they are unable to physically harm you. So as soon as Sauron's forces recognize that the Oathbreakers are, to put it bluntly, just a scary magic trick, then the effectiveness of the Oathbreakers plummets. So the Oathbreakers were effective at Pelagir, and would likely be effective at the Pelennor Fields, but beyond that, Sauron's forces would likely work out that the Oathbreakers are incapable of truly hurting them. While orcs and wicked men would certainly still be afraid of them, they would be even more afraid of their own commanders, such as the Nazgul or even Sauron himself, who would go a long way in holding them together in the face of this fear. So, by the time Aragorn decides to march on Mordor, the Oathbreakers might be completely useless. What I'm saying is that the Oathbreakers were like a special party trick. Cool once or twice, but after that it gets kind of old. You might be thinking, well, okay, but given how successful the Oathbreakers were at Pelagir, surely they would still be useful at the Pelennor Fields. Why wouldn't Aragorn use them? There's two things to consider here. Firstly, Pelagor and the Pelennor Fields were two vastly different battles. By driving away the Corsairs at Pelagir, Aragorn was able to seize their ships. This was a huge strategic victory for the Free Peoples, because the seizing of the Corsair fleet left Sauron without a navy, and severely limited his strike potential against southern Gondor. However, if Aragorn were to deploy the Oathbreakers against the Morgul host at Pelennor Fields, it would not achieve the same level of success. Sure, the Free Peoples would have a temporary tactical victory on account of the Morgul host fleeing, but after a few days, it's likely the Morgul host would reform, reinforce, and would then attack Minas Tirith a second time. So the Free Peoples haven't truly won the Battle of Pelennor Fields, they've simply delayed it. This is a worse outcome than what occurs in the actual timeline, where the Morgul host was decisively destroyed, giving Aragorn enough time to march on the Black Gate. The second thing I want to mention is collateral damage. Although Aragorn controlled the Oathbreakers, he could not control the effect they had on his allied soldiers. Notably, when the Oathbreakers arrived at Lynn here, both Sauron's forces and Gondor's forces fled the field. Only one man was brave enough to stand his ground, Angbor, Lord of Lamadon. Aragorn bids Angbor gather his forces and follow, but they hang back and only begin gathering at Pelagir after Aragorn has released the Oathbreakers. Evidently, no one wants to be around them. Now, imagine if Aragorn arrived at the Pelennor Fields with the Oathbreakers. Not only would Sauron's forces rout, but so too would the Rohirrim, as would Gondor's forces that had sallied forth from Minas Tirith. With the exception of the Grey Company, even Aragorn's own forces would likely still be afraid, had they chosen to come. The battlefield would descend into complete and utter chaos as men and orcs flee in every direction. As I said earlier, there would be no decisive outcome to the battle, it would just be resetting the pieces for a second engagement. 
Now imagine Aragorn taking the Oathbreakers to the Black Gate. His army is severely outnumbered, they're going to fight in a completely hostile terrain, and a thousand of them have already refused to go any further. Now imagine this same demoralized army having to deal with perpetual fear of having an army of ghosts around them. Even if the ghosts are on your side, it's an unnerving thing to have to deal with, and it might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. On the other side of the field, Mordor's forces are controlled by Sauron himself, and you know his will is going to be powerful enough to hold them together no matter what they face. Alright, so to summarize everything we have learned, why didn't Aragorn take the Oathbreakers to Mordor? Firstly, there's no guarantee that he would even be able to. Aragorn seems to stipulate that he would release the Oathbreakers after Pelagir. It's possible that if he went back on that promise, he would suffer consequences of his own. Iluvatar might bypass his authority over the Oathbreakers, the Oathbreakers might rebel, or his own soldiers and followers might disapprove of such actions. Secondly, if Aragorn could continue to use the Oathbreakers, they would quickly become ineffective. If used at the Pelennor Fields, the Oathbreakers would have a fear effect on both sides, causing everyone to withdraw and rendering the battle inconclusive. It wouldn't take long for Sauron's forces to recognize that the Oathbreakers had no real power except for fear. Thus, we arrive at the final answer. Could Aragorn have taken the Oathbreakers to Mordor? Maybe. Would they have been effective? Probably not. Would they have been worth it? Probably not. In fact, there is a good chance they would have been more of a hindrance than a help at that point. In the end, Aragorn used the Oathbreakers well. He used them to win a substantial victory and didn't push his luck any further. And knowing when not to push your luck is a good leadership quality in itself. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. Because I've never said it before, probably because I've never had the opportunity, while I actually do like the lore behind the Oathbreakers, I really do hate their usage in the story. That's all I have to say. Cheers, farewell, and remember,